Hi, Winnie. Hi, friend. <laughs> okay, that's new. Yeah. Um, and hi, viewers. My name is Toshiku with Ramos Realty, uh, and welcome back to the Ramos Realty Bricks and Banter podcast. Joining me today is Winifred Oziti. Thank you for joining us on the podcast. Thank you for having me. I know it was very, very stressful for you to come here. Mm -hmm. We've had a very busy day. All right. Um, initially, we scheduled for 1 p.m., uh, but we're doing this by 4.30 p.m. So. All right. Yeah. Uh, Winnie is our in-house land broker. Um, so anything involving land anywhere in Lagos, um, Winnie is a go-to. She's one of the most reliable and trusted land salespeople in Lagos. Mm -hmm. And we are honored to have you in our studio. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, um, for you to be here, yeah. it's because we want to talk about land. Right. Right. Um, and I'm going to start by asking, is land still a viable investment? You know, uh, and I'm going to take you back to the early 2000s when stocks and shares were the, the big the big deal. You know, even my parents bought shares in like so many banks, mm. right? Um, but then the economy happened and stuff. And now those shares are just, they're not worth even... 10% of what they were back then, right? right? And everybody's moving to land. Um, is it safe? Is it? Are we going to see a share stock incident happening again? Or do you think land is like a show banker when it comes to investment? Absolutely. Um, I know it might sound cliche to some people when we say invest in land, invest in land, invest in land. Well, investing in land is one of the smartest investment decisions that you can ever make. And when it comes to real estate, you need to be strategic about your investment. Right. Right. So I let me give you an example. In 2020, a land that was sold for 2.5 million currently in 2024 is being sold for 15 million naira. Mm, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Right. So the over time, the value of the land appreciated. And due to the developments coming up in all of those axes, that also attributed to the increase in price of the land as well. Right. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for, for, for sharing this instance with us. Mm -hmm. Because I want to give an instance on okay. my own. <laughs> right. So somebody was uh, saying a while ago, right, they bought land sometime in 2008 for 8 million. I'm, I'm not really, I don't really have the figure, but let, let's right. just, let, this hypothetically, let, let me give you um, two numbers out. They bought land sometime in 2008 for 8 million, okay. right? And last year they sold for 40 million, right? Okay. And, you know, anybody would say, oh, they've made 32 million in profit. But this person lives in the UK, okay. right? And in 2008, um, the equivalent of 8 million in British pounds was probably, say, 20,000 pounds <laughs> or maybe yeah. 10,000, maybe 15,000 pounds. Today, 40 million is not even up to. Right. I mean, I'm not an expert on exchange rates, right? Mm -hmm. But essentially what I'm saying is in terms of like currency and everything, you may be making more in Naira, but when you really do your conversions, you find out that you've lost money. So comparing that, let's contrast that with what you said and, you know, land being such a great investment and everything. Isn't it contradictory? Um, not at all. Um, this is even more favorable to Nigerians in diaspora when it comes to um, buying property here in Nigeria due to the exchange rate. So because they're over there, we, when you convert it to Naira, it's a little bit lesser right mm. and in nigeria almost everything is imported so if the if the dollar is going up or whatever exchange rate is going up inflation sets in right right and it also affects um the appreciation of land so if inflation is there and things are going up obviously the price, the price of, of land is also going to go up so yeah um but then what about what when they want to sell I mean, it's easier for them to, it's cheaper for them to buy because, you know, their currency is high and everything. What do want, when they want to sell? Regardless of buying or selling, right, as long as inflation is there, as long as the cost of living is on going the high up. side, the price of the property is also going to go up. Right. So, yeah. 
So uh, is your prayer point is, dear God, let's cost of living. <laughs> the increase. Well, obviously not. Come on, <laughs> but it is what it is, right? Right. Um, yeah. um, very, very, very good answer. Uh, speaking of you know devaluation of the currency and everything, I've heard um, people say land banking is sort of like a hedge. Oh yeah. Um, against currency devaluation. Um, for those who may not know, what is land banking? Um, first of land banking is something that has really been on and people have been on to in the real estate sector. Simply, I will put it, uh, land banking is the process of acquiring large land in undeveloped regions, right. right, for the purpose of reselling much later. So when developments are coming up in that axis and obvious the, the price of Prices the land we up. appreciate then they start to sell so basically that's that's what land banking is all so about so the 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 benefit is mostly you're buying cheaper you're buying cheaper it also has an edge over inflation mm. right so as prices of things are going up cost of living is going up obviously your land price will also go up and the value of your land is also appreciating another benefit is that it requires zero maintenance cost I mean, you're buying land, so you're not going there to do any major thing apart from the... Maybe fencing, if you, if you feel like. If you feel like. Right. So you have zero maintenance cost, and yeah. Right. Um, you know, it sounds very rosy when you say well, buy land today, tomorrow's going to be worth so much money, and you don't, you don't need to... Yeah, it sounds very rosy. But like we know, nothing, mm. even, even in Freetown, nothing is free, <laughs> right? Um, right? What are the risks involved? Because, I mean, advantages and disadvantages, what are the risks involved in land banking? Um, one of the risks involved is buying land from the wrong people, mm. right? You don't want to buy a land that has already been sold because this is a case that is very, very quite common. Right. You know, people sell land, they sell to different people, and then you end up in court fighting. So one of the risks is buying land from the wrong people. Another risk is also um, acquiring the necessary um, documents from the government. That's also for an approvals as well. So that's also something that you know, is... If, if not done properly. Could. Right, know. okay. Great, yeah. awesome, awesome. Um, you know, so much has been said about you know buying land and keeping it, mm -hmm. you know. So everybody kind of has that idea that um, the benefit, the essence of buying land, then we buy it and hold it, and you know it's like Bitcoin. And you know, apart from you know, buying and building and all that, yeah. what other advantages? So for people who maybe are not interested in buying, and what other advantages are there to land ownership? There are so many, 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 many other uses mm. for land. You can't just buy, okay, it's, it's fine if you buy a land and, you know, you decide to resell it. That's okay. But there are still other uses that you can use your land for, right? Number one is collateral. Mm. You can use your land as a means of collateral. You can have a long lease. It's still your land. Mm. You know, you lease it out. You can use it as a park. You can give it to people to farm. Mm -hmm. and you still make some money out of it, right? You could also use it as a warehouse, as a storage house. So there are so many, so many uses of land aside from just buying and, you know, keeping and reselling. Also, land is something that you own to your name. I always like to tell my friends, you need to have something to prove, not, not to prove necessarily, but you need to have something to your name to show that, yes, this is as a result of, of my, my work. work. Mm. You get, Motivate, and it's something, you can, me <laughs> it. it's something you can still pass to your children, your grand, it's generational. I mean, the, you, you cannot even underestimate the entire uses of land. Right. So, yeah. That's that's very that's a very um, incredible answer. Thank thank that's very profound. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. now the trap I said I told I, told I was going to set the trap for you. Right. <laughs> it's time. Okay. And all the agents, almost all the land agents or mm -hmm. land brokers in Lagos are on this table, right? <laughs> Ibe Juleki and Ekpe. Mm -hmm. Um, you know everybody's like buying Ibe, buying Ekpe, refinery. Uh, airport, deep sea port, free train zone. <laughs> I can, I, I can sit down and I've, I've heard it so many times, right? Yeah. And it's it's starting to seem like you know it's just like gimmicks and propaganda, like it's because I've not that, have they laid the foundation for the airport? No yet. Have they started building the deep sea port? On it, I think. Um, the refinery. Okay, the refinery. They, they build the refinery, but it's not functioning yes. yet. Yeah. Um, what about the free trade zone? Is that are they building that? 
Yes, it's on. Okay. Um, if with that, we've been hearing about that for like years. I feel, I feel like by now we should have seen structure on ground. <laughs> but so I feel like it's starting to look like you know agents are just saying come and buy, come and buy. This will be here. This and it's just promises and pipe dreams. Um, are you even confident that these infrastructures are going to come up? Absolutely, absolutely. When Chuku, these projects are not small projects. These are massive projects that is being backed up by the state mm -hmm. government. So it might take some time, right? But they are going to happen. Take it or leave it. So that's why, because, you know, in real estate, you actually need to foresee. Like, you are not looking at the now. You have to look beyond what you see. These things are going to come. It might take some time. It's going to happen. Right? That's why we tell people this is the best time to invest in Ibejuleki and Epe. Take it or leave it. Ibejuleki and Epe is going to be the new Lagos in years to come. It's not going to happen now, but in years to come. You come back to this video and confirm what I'm telling you. Right. Right. I feel. Yeah. I feel like you know. I feel like we can say this thing. This what you just said now. Mm -hmm. you know, we can go back two thousand years, and say it goes, it goes out like Jesus is going to come. Just goes, <laughs> we have been waiting. We have been waiting. Is it, is it today? Is it tomorrow? We don't know. It's going to happen. And it's just like it's going to happen. It's and going it's just, to happen. There's no. I mean, this, maybe this is not on you as a, as a broker. Mm -hmm. I mean. You know it's going to happen. You know the, the, the plans are there. There's land that's been set out mm -hmm. at, as you know government land for these projects, but you know it also doesn't instill confidence that they have been using the same plot, the same story to sell something for years and years and years. And you know, just, where are these things? Because people who bought land maybe five years ago thinking, oh, by by 2024, the was going to be there, and I'm, you know. So regardless of all of this project right mm. the thing is your land is still your land and the value is still appreciating it's mm. still going up now let me give you an instance as of last year december right a client of mine wanted to get a land just opposite the international the new proposed airport mm. right and as of last year it was 25 million mm. so this year i think sometime last week i went to the surveyor to you know check the land and for a surveyor to do his work and then ask for the new price. It's 30 million. Wow, 5 million in, five, in just a month. Wow. Right. So you, and, and they have not even laid foundation for airports yet. And like <laughs> any, lit, wow. any little progress that comes up with that project of the airports, the price of the land is it's just it's not going, going go to crazy. be the same. That is why we keep telling people, take advantage and invest. Your land is your land, right? So, yeah. Speaking of, you know, buying land, uh, the, uh, in December it was 25 million and generally it's 50 yeah. million and all that. Yeah. There's something that real estate companies do, especially these companies that sell, you know, buy massive plots of land and then, you know, allocate, what do they do? Allocate. allocate. Right. <laughs> um, there's something they do where they advertise and they tell you, um, this land is currently selling for six million, but in two months' time, it's going to sell for forty million. How do they? It's like they are dictating the prices and creating sort of like artificial scarcity, or you know, driving artificial demand and all that. You know, it's not. It, it's, it doesn't feel natural the way it appreciates. So, what do you have to say about that? It feels like, you know, they're just doing this to make make people feel like, oh, the land is appreciating, but it's, they're forcing it. Yeah. I don't. T I don't totally agree, right? So, I don't you, think you don't totally agree. I don't totally but agree. But you partly agree. Actually, yeah. Right, but that's 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 um, uh, I don't I don't want to use the word anymore. But that's like bad business practice, isn't it? Yeah, is it is, is it, it a very bad marketing strategy? Don't you think? Not necessarily. These places are places that are still coming up, mm. right? And with every little development that comes up in that place, is a prompt to increase the price of their land. Now, if for, if an estate, for example, you know, is trying to sell a land and they are trying to do all of the infrastructural development in the estate, right? right most of the times, a lot of factors are being considered. A lot of things are considered before those prices are increased. So you don't just say, oh, today they decide to sell it for this amount, and tomorrow they also decide to sell it. There is always something that prompts. Right, so these price increases are not arbitrary. At all. 
Oh, okay. I, I didn't know that. <laughs> well, Thank now you, so you know. Now you know. Now you know. Now you know. Um, speaking of land companies that, you know, sell land and everything, I don't know if you saw a video, I think it was two weeks ago or something. Yeah where a man in Canada was crying and oh, saying, yeah, Oh yeah, I saw that video. You know, they stole, they, I paid for land, they're, they're, they're mm -hmm. I, I, we know, we don't want to mention it, we know uh, the community yeah. question. Um, and you know, we, we've heard stories, right? Right. Uh, how do you protect your clients or your prospective clients from incidents like this? Have, have, you, have you ever experienced anything like this? Not at all. Uh, so, so what, what measures do you take to make sure that, you know, if somebody trusts me to deliver, buy land for them or sell a land to them, you know, um, there's no, they're not going to have issues in the future? So for me personally, right, as a broker, I'm very intentional about the properties or the, the lands that I market. Mm -hmm. And we as an organization, Ramos Real, Real Estate, we also do our due diligence. We cross our eyes without our T's. We also, over the time, we build relationship with, you know, surveyors, lawyers. We also have people in the land bureau. And, you know, when a client comes and wants to get a property, we go the extra mile to make sure that this property that our client is about to get has the right documentations and everything is in check. So because we have our own we also have our own reputations well. to, to protect as well. Right. Yeah. And then as a client as well, if you're buying, please do your own. You check. also need to do we your always, due diligence. You do your part, I do we my advise. part. Do your own. Do too. your own research right. and all of that. Right. Uh, so about to round up, right? Yeah. Um, so if you've watched this podcast, uh, if you've watched this podcast, we expect you to, we expect that you've learned about land banking, right. the prospects of land and all that. Now, you might probably be wondering, okay, so we've, I've heard so much about investing, but where should I invest? Where should I buy? Give me, so I'm going to ask you from your own knowledge and from your own experience, give us expo, because me, I want to buy land too. <laughs> Yes, so give I'm me a forcing you to buy land. <laughs> Have you been responsive? Give me a spoon. Where, where should I buy that land? Well, I would say that it depends. It depends on your per, your, your personal preference, right? Why mm -hmm. are you buying this land? Are you buying this land to build your personal house? Are you buying this land for investment purpose? So with that, we'll be able to, you know, identify which option or what locations will be best for you. But if you're looking at investing, trust me, guys. Ibejuleki and Epe is a good, 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 good. It's not, this, it's not this, a this gimmick. Same, this it is what song, it this is. This same song that you could so sing on. It is what it is. Trust so if I, if I wanted to go invest in Ibejuleki, any specific areas? Yeah, Ibejuleki. So we have this very nice estate, Itunu, Itunu City, Itunu mm -hmm. Extension, Itunu by Veritasi. By Veritasi. Okay. So that is one you know, company I can vouch for and, you know, all of the lands we've sold, we've never had any issues. Mm. You know, you get your documents, allocations, everything in check. So, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, any other? Any other? Here are a few more. So, basically, locations, Ibejuleki and Ebe. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So, very, very insightful um, podcast, I hope. <laughs> uh, and I hope that, you know, if you've watched, you've enjoyed it and you've learned something. Mm. So thank you, Winnie Fred. Thank you. For making thank yourself you. available. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, even if it took, you know, know. We, we know the back story. We, back you don't story. even want to know. I'll, I'll, I'll publish a book. <laughs> and Winnie Fred will get two chapters <laughs> dedicated to her. But, but um, we're glad that you could make it. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you. And um, thank you for watching. Um, we hope that you enjoyed this. And if you did, please like, share. Um, leave a comment, ask us any questions, you know, that you might have about land. Um, I will ask Winifred, I can I'll ask her. I'm always here for and you. And I will answer. Always here. Um, and please like our video. I've said that, right? Yes. Subscribe. And subscribe to our subscribe channel. Subscribe to our channel. Subscribe to our channel. We need the channel to grow. <laughs> um, uh, thank you so much, guys. Uh, see you at the next podcast. Bye. Bye.